Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on the cardiac conduction system. This intrinsic innovation allows the heart to continue beating if its extrinsic or autonomic nerve supply is disrupted, such as in the transplanted heart. The cardiac conduction system is composed of the sinoatrial node, which is located in the right atrial wall at the junction of the right atrium with the superior vena cava. Cell types of the SA node includes the spider and spindle pacemaker cell types, which are found in the center of the SA node, and atrial cells, which are found near the periphery of the SA node. Internodal connections, which consist of the anterior internodal system, also known as the Batchman's bundle. Action potential spreads rapidly through the atrial musculature to the left atrium via the Batchman bundle, the middle internodal system, and the posterior internodal system. The atrioventricular node, located in the floor of the right atrium, near the ostium of the coronary sinus. The AV node consists of four areas, the AN transition zone, containing cells smaller than the normal atrial cells, the compact node, posterior nodal extension, and the lower nodal cell bundle. The bundle of His, also known as the atrioventricular bundle, it passes along the superior edge of the membranous interventricular septum to the apex of the muscular portion of the septum. The right and left bundle branches at the apex of the muscular portion of the septum, the common bundle of His divides into the right and left bundle branches. They then extend subendocardially along the surfaces of both ventricles. The right bundle branch emerges in the right ventricular endocardium near the moderator band at the base of the anterior papillary muscle. Typically, it continues to extend for some distance without dividing. However, one branch passes through the moderator band, the other branch passes over the right ventricular endocardial surface. The left bundle branch divides into the anterior and posterior fascicles shortly after its origin. The posterior fascicle terminates in the posterior papillary muscle. A small collection of short medial fascicles also divides from the left bundle just after the anterior fascicle and activates the septal myocardium. The Purkinje fibers arises from the fascicles of both right and left bundle branches. The left bundle branch fascicles make their initial functional contact with the endocardium of the interventricular septum below the aortic valve. The right bundle branch fascicles contact ventricular subendocardium near the base of the anterior papillary muscle. Cardiac action potentials The pacemaker action potential Pacemaker cells in the SA node generate action potentials spontaneously and at regular intervals than other parts of the conducting system. When a spontaneously developing local potential, known as the pacemaker potential, reaches the threshold potential, action potentials are generated in the SA node. Phase 0. Last 1 to 2 milliseconds. Baseline drift occurs spontaneously. The threshold potential is achieved at negative 40 mV. Sodium influx occurs as sodium channels open. A decrease in permeability to potassium occurs. Voltage-gated potassium channels that open in the repolarization phase of the previous action potential are closing. Slow calcium influx occurs at about negative 30 mV. Slow L-type calcium channels open. Calcium influx results in further depolarization, resulting in a slurred upstroke. On the ECG, spread of depolarization throughout the atrial muscle results in the P wave and the ventricular muscle results in the QRS complex. Phase 3. Efflux of potassium occurs. Potassium channels open. Efflux of potassium causes rapid repolarization of the cell. Calcium channels close. During phase 4, hyperpolarization occurs before potassium efflux has completely stopped. Gradual drift towards the threshold potential occurs after hyperpolarization ceases due to sodium influx, T-type calcium channels, and sodium calcium pump. Cations enter the cell. The gradient of the line in phase 4 
is increased by sympathetic nervous system stimulation and decreased by parasympathetic nervous system stimulation. Cardiac conduction system action potential. Phase 0. Fast sodium influx occurs, voltage-gated sodium channels open, and rapid depolarization occurs once the threshold potential is reached. The gradient of this line is almost vertical. Voltage-gated potassium channels close. During phase 1, potassium efflux occurs, sodium channels close and potassium channels open. Repolarization begins to occur. It is short in duration and does not cause repolarization below 0 mV. During phase 2, opening of L-type calcium channels occur. Calcium influx offsets the action of potassium efflux. Depolarization is maintained during this phase and a plateau occurs. This time period is the absolute refractory period. No further depolarization is possible during this phase, thus tetany is not possible in the myocardium. The end of the absolute refractory period is signaled by the earliest transient depolarization that can be elicited as sufficient numbers of sodium channels that can be activated are present. This absolute refractory period ends at the beginning of the T-wave of the ECG. The plateau is not completely horizontal as repolarization is slowed but not completely halted by calcium influx. During phase 3, L-type calcium channels close, continued potassium efflux causes repolarization. Once repolarization reaches the threshold potential, the cell is relatively refractory However, an unusually strong stimulus can produce depolarization during this period. This period is marked by the T-wave of the ECG. During phase 4, potassium channels close. The sodium-potassium pump restores the ionic gradients. Three sodium ions are pumped out of the cell in exchange for two potassium ions, which is pumped into the cell. Overall, a slow loss of positive ionic charge occurs from within the cell. Relative refractory period occurs. The earliest propagated action potential marks the end of the effective or functional refractory period. Alterations in cardiac action potentials. The rate of firing of an automatic cell depends on the slope of the phase 4 depolarization, the resting membrane potential, which refers to the maximum diastolic potential achieved at the end of repolarization, and the threshold potential. Effects on the pacemaker action potential, the slope of phase 4 is increased by sympathetic nervous stimulation, hypercarbia, increased pH, ischemia and hypoxia, and the slope of phase 4 is decreased by parasympathetic nervous system stimulation, hypothermia and hyponatremia. The rate of firing of pacemaker action potential is increased by hypokalemia and decreased by hyperkalemia and hypothermia. Effects on action potential duration, it is increased by hypocalcemia and decreased by hypercalcemia. Causes of decreased diastolic depolarization includes hypoxia, hyperkalemia, hypercarbia, and increased pH. Membrane electrical stability is decreased by hypokalemia as it reduces the conductance through the inward rectifier channel, causing a higher tendency for ectopy. The membrane electrical stability is increased in hyperkalemia as more potassium current escapes from the cell and the membrane is relatively stable. Cardiac myocyte conduction Action potentials originate in the SA node, which is the primary cardiac pacemaker. Cells of the SA node spontaneously generate action potentials at a greater frequency than other cardiac muscle cells, thus these cells are called the pacemaker of the heart. These action potentials then travel across the wall of the atrium via the anterior, middle and posterior internodal pathways to reach the AV node. Action potentials from the sinoatrial node is transmitted across the left atrium through the atrial septum via the Batchman's bundle. 0.04 seconds is required for the action potentials to travel from the SA node to the AV node. Action potentials passes through the AV node along the bundle of His. The AV bundle extends from the AV node through the fibrous skeleton 
into the interventricular septum. The atria is electrically isolated from the ventricles by the heart's cartilaginous skeleton. Thus, atrial depolarization is directed solely to the right ventricle and left ventricle through the AV node, which pierces the cartilaginous framework. A delay of 0.11 seconds occurs from the time action potentials reach the AV node until they pass to the AV bundle. This occurs as the muscle fibers of the AV node have small diameters and fewer gap junctions in their intercalated discs compared with the remainder of the conducting system. This delay of action potential transmission allows for completion of the atrial contraction before ventricular contraction begins. The AV bundle divides into the right and left bundle branches. Action potentials descend to the apex of each ventricle along these bundle branches. Action potentials are transmitted by the Purkinje fibers from the bundle branches to the ventricular walls and papillary muscles. Ventricular contraction begins at the apex and progresses throughout the ventricles towards the base of the heart, as the first part of the ventricular myocardium that is stimulated is the inner wall of the ventricles near the apex. Each part of the cardiac conduction system has its own intrinsic pacemaker. Regarding autorhythmicity of cardiac muscle, the heart is said to be autorhythmic because it stimulates itself, auto, to contract at regular intervals, rhythmic. The heart will continue to beat autorhythmically despite being removed from the body if it's maintained under physiological conditions with the proper nutrients and temperature. The dominance of the sinoatrial node automaticity can be superseded in the following situations, such as decreases in SAN firing rate, delays or blockade of normal conduction, presence of secondary pacemakers, such as AV node and bundle of his, and damage of the sinoatrial node. If a higher pacing center is damaged, and stop functioning, a lower pacing center can take over. The intrinsic rates of the sinoatrial node is 60 to 100 beats per minute, the AV node 40 to 60 beats per minute, bundle of his 40 to 60 beats per minute, and the Purkinje fibers 20 to 40 beats per minute. Supraventricular tachyarrhythmias The AV node is responsible for the sequential contraction pattern of the atria and ventricles as the AV node conduction velocity is quite slow compared with the pathways proximal and distal to it. Abnormal conduction between the atria and ventricles may be established by accessory pathways that bypasses the AV node, and this may result in supraventricular tachyarrhythmias such as the Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, which is produced via the bundle of Kent accessory pathway. Functional syncytium the network of electrically connected cardiac muscle cells creates a functional unit of contraction called the syncytium. The rapid conduction velocity through the bundle of his, bundle branches and Purkinje fibers enables coordinated right ventricular and left ventricular depolarization and contraction. Uniform contractile activation of the ventricles occurs via depolarization of the Purkinje fibers which are homogeneously distributed throughout the ventricular myocardium. Desynchronous ventricular activation occurs during artificial right ventricular epicardial pacing, which is occasionally used during cardiac surgery and does not rely on the normal cardiac conduction sequence. This may be mistaken for a new ischemia-induced regional wall motion abnormality on echocardiogram. Left ventricular dysfunction and heart failure can result from long-term imposition of contractile dyssynchrony from chronic right ventricular apical pacing. Cardiac resynchronization therapy aims to restore the normal electrical activation sequence to improve left ventricular function. These are my references. Thank you.